Hey guys, just want to let you know about the new website, Aspect of the Hunter. If you want to find the latest pet, transmog, or anything else WoW related, head on over to Aspect of the Hunter. It's the home for all us hunters. Hey, what's up guys? Ravenclaw here, and welcome back to another PvP guide. Now, just to let you guys know what's been happening over the last few days is I have been knocked out seriously. Had major chest pains on Friday and ever since then it just went downhill. Um, I've only just come okay now. I'm still not feeling the best, but I didn't want to let you guys down any longer. So uh, yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, first things we're gonna look at is the talents. We're gonna go to the talents, then we'll go to the pets, then we'll go to the rotation, macros, add-ons, and saying goodbye. All right, first one, we're gonna go throwing axes. One is our ranged attack. It's great for taking out totems, getting a kill on someone that's just running away from you, um, being able to keep people in combat. There's just so many applications that these uh, this takes that is too lucrative for us not to take it. Um, it's also good to work it into your uh, burst rotation. And I'll show you that in the next part of the video. Um, the next one, Murder of Crows and Snake Hunter, the only ones that I take. Now, I really only take Murder of Crows if I'm gonna get kited a lot. Um, but in threes, usually if you're saying running uh, a KFC, Thug, that you can lock down a target, it's best to take Snake Hunter. Now, Snake Hunter gives you an instant three charges of um, Mongoose Bite. Now, you obviously don't pop it straight at the beginning because you've got Mongoose Bite, but I will show you how to incorporate that into your burst in the next part. Uh, the next one, Disengage or Post Haste. Um, I very rarely take Disengage. The reason why I like to take Post Haste is one, we all know what it does. It does um, give you a speed boost, but it removes, takes you out of um, like snares and stuff from a mage. But the reason why, another reason why is because when you harpoon trap across the map to land a um, trap on the healer, you get that speed buff to get back in and it also ensures that you can get across the map say if you're rooted you break out of that route and um, go for your cc uh, disengage is okay if you, for getting um you know back behind a pillar or getting closer to your teammates and whatnot now don't look at the tooltip there the only reason it's saying it breaks uh, movement speed and that is because i have post haste active if i click on that it changes all right next one Caltrops, Gorilla Tactics. Most of the time I run Gorilla Tactics because I use my um, Explosive Trap a lot in my burst and this increases its power. Same with free trap, Freeze Trap and whatnot. Now, be mindful, okay? A lot of people get, this conf get confused with this. Now, if I drop a trap, right? You just wait for it and it will turn, there we go, okay? It has to activate before this comes into play. If it doesn't, it will break. So I get that a lot, saying this, I put it down, it breaks, and da, 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 that's why. You have to wait for the trap to activate first, and then, yeah, you get the idea. Now, here's why I like it for explosive trap, because it makes, if you're going on a melee target, it makes them miss their next two attacks, which could be huge, you know? Could be an execute, it could be a glacial spike, I don't know, you know what I mean? You get the idea. Caltrops is when I'm running against a double melee. Um, it's great to get them, because if they're targeting you, it's great to get that bleed damage out on everyone that stands in it, and plus it slows their movement speed a lot. Great for peeling if you can get to your healer, peel for your healer, and yeah. Um, so it's really situational. Try them both out and see which one that you, and which situation you can utilize those. Um, these two here, if I'm running, um, say, Thug, and we want to sort of stealth and get the opener, I'll take the Camouflage. Um, but if I'm going up something that has a lot of pets, say, you know, going up, say, Cupid with a BM Hunter, you can actually utilize this in a different way than I see a lot of people using. You can actually macro this the same way that you would your Growl. You can actually range in it the Hunter's pet and root them down like a Druid would. So make sure you... I will show you how to do that when we get to our macros and things like that. But yeah, it's situational. Usually I do take camouflage so that we can you know, get the opener and it's great. As you see, you do get healed every two, uh, every one second for 2% of your health. It's great for if you need to get out of combat and get yourself back into stealth, but you also can get a heal up. It's good for twos as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Um, so this one here, I take Dragon's Fire Grenade 1. It's another ranged attack slows the target 
it actually does a crap ton of damage when everything you know all the moons are lined up um but yeah it, it's the most beneficial one that i see for this and it both because it does aoe as well so it explodes but um the thing is you can take uh, serpent sting if you're going for more of a dot pressure because you can then when you take carve it applies serpent sting to everyone around you know you can put that on the pets things like that um, but most of the time I do take Dragon's Fire Grenade. Uh, okay, and the last one here is Expert Trapper. Now, what this does for us is increases the explosive traps um, damage to the triggering enemy by 75%, which is great because once again, that's in our rotation. Um, now, the Freezing Trap. Okay, Freezing Trap's incapacitate effect ends the, the victim and all nearby enemies' move speeds reduced by 50%. And that's really awesome, especially if you land a trap on a healer it gets out and it's, it slows them enough for a, you know cross cc or anything like that so they just can't you know get behind pillar and line anything else that's coming their way uh those are the two main ones and uh cow drops cow drops it increases its damage by 50 percent um but that's the main talents i use now let's go into honor talents uh gladiator's medallion i run pretty much all the time i just it just myself personally i love having my own control over when i get to use my trinket um i've been too many times where adaptation has been procced when i've been sapped and you have to wait another minute before you can get out of you know cc um okay so against melees i take sparring because you increase your chance to uh, reduce the damage now watch this one here so melee attack have a 20 percent chance to be blunted and have their damage reduced by 50% and that's great for saying warriors pop recklessness and all that stuff goes to telling you it's just it's just a great way for some, some extra survivability um reinforced armor it just increases your health by 10% um usually i do run uh, sparring and this one here while above 80% health you take 20% less damage that doesn't really click too well with me so i sit with these two depending on where we're at um but yeah so moving on uh, Catlight reflexes against melee comps. I spoke about these in my last things. There's no different, but I'll quickly run through it. Melees, uh, warriors and whatnot. Survival tactics against affliction locks, uh, shadow priests and all that to be able to remove all those magical effects. And dragon scale armor if you really wanted to reduce that uh, spread damage for like affliction locks and whatnot. Um, Viper Sting, great for druids in bear form. You pop that. If you pop in everything else and you're on them, you've trained them because survival hunters can kill healers pretty well and once a bear once a druid drops into bear all they're doing is um healing over time effects pop that and it just reduces all that really well especially in dampening um that's this one here is great for warriors especially when they pop recklessness mixed with this it just reduces all that damage a lot a critical strike you know um and spider sting for uh mages locks anyone basically anyone that can do an offensive spell um all right so here's the next one mending bandages bandages <laughs> mending oh my god mending bandages all right um i usually take this in twos mostly because if we're up against a rogue and they put that stupid bleed on you that every time you move it refreshes you can remove it yourself and um, just in case your healer's going to be pulled out to just do a dispel on you or save a dispel for later on you just take it off yourself and a teammate you know you can switch it whichever one you want um now master's call i take especially in threes it's it's really important to have a, a um a freedom for a survival you can cast it on yourself you cast it on your teammate cast it on whoever whoever okay um i will show you how i macro this later on and how we utilize it um but that's pretty much it for that and okay now this one is situational again if you take diamond ice it turns your trap into a banish not an incapacitate so where are we Okay, so if I don't know if it'll work. Nope. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it can't be broken. It's like a it's like a clone. Okay. Um, then that way, if you're running with a monk, they can incap out of that and go on from there. Um, Tracker's net is also really good for melees. So people within the net um, have a chance to reduce. Uh, where is it? Their hit chance is reduced by eighty percent. Um, most of the time I will run say sticky tar and trackers net and it's only occasionally will I run uh, diamond ice if diamond ice is good as if you're not with a druid but it's also really good if you're doing killing often like a kill target 
So you're going for the healer, but you want to CC one of the um, other DPS. Putting Diamond Dice on your trap, it is really good to lock them out because it can't be dispelled or anything like that. Um, but yeah, like I say, all these, you should go and test for yourself to see how they work in different situations because like, like I always say, everyone plays differently. But um, other than that, that's our talents and um, we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so here we are. We're going to look at the, um, the main spells that we need to use, what we need to track and so on and so forth. Now, let is let us just get up a proc of Mongoose Fury, I think it is. Okay, so Mongoose Fury, all right? This is something you need to keep an eye on because every time you hit with Mongoose Bite, it doesn't refresh the timer. It only um, increases the stacks. Now, you can track this a few ways if you really want to. If you've gotten class mods, which is what I used in my last video, and you go down to alerts, you can create your own alert to be able to put up here. Um, for example, I don't have the ID, but I'll, sh I'll um, probably link the ID for IDs as well when I put it down in the description. But what I'm trying to get at is you can have it pop up here so you have more of a visual. Like I know it does come around your screen here and stuff, but it's important that you stack, you get those stacks right to be able to then extend the time and just put out a lot more pressure. Um, but yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next part. So the idea, when we're bursting as a survival hunter is to manage our mongo stacks because they hit really hard at six stacks. Um, what I'd like to do first is we'll open up, we dot everything up, okay? So we got our elacerate, our explosive trap and our dragon's fire grenade. Dot the target up. This is say we've stunned the target, we've locked them down, we're ready to go nuts. Um, so we'll lacerate put our dragon's fire grenade then we mongoose mongoose use the three stacks okay then you pop everything flanking strikes and then mongoose mongoose now look at the timer it's down to five seconds use your artifact ability to increase the time for a little bit more and then you should have more um stacks of mongoose bite and yeah so the important thing is there to get your six stacks as fast as you can and use them, trying to keep it at six extra as long as you can. Um, most of the time, if you're using flanking strikes, it'll give you hunting companion, which is a refresh of a stack on your mongoose bite. Okay, so if you do that, you will do a ton of damage really fast. But now let's talk about, all right, we've just used everything. What do we do in the downtime? Okay, so we need to keep pressure. What I like to do is I like to keep my three stacks up as much as I can, and then in between, Right, so we'd say we've just lost our three stacks. What I like to do is then I'll dot the targets up and I'll use, say, flanking strike and then throwing axes. Now, you see I've only got one stack there. I wait for them to come back up to three and then that's when I'll use all three. So then we'll keep going down, keep going down. Flanking strikes, got another one there. Then I'll use my artifact ability just to increase the timer on my um, Mongoose Fury there. And then you just keep going and going and going. But the important thing is when you're in your downtime, dot the targets okay dot the targets use your flanking strikes use your throwing axes to do sustained damage but don't just go ahead and you know hit the um hit the mongoose bite when you only have one okay because you're not being effective wait till you have three stacks then use them because most of the time you'll get some hunting companion procs give you more stacks and then you can just keep pressuring and pressuring and pressuring um and then it is Usually, I don't really utilize my um, Fury of the Eagle just for the damage. What I'm using it for is the extension of time. So, it is important to the higher the stacks you have, the better. So, don't try. So, try and get your um, your stacks up at least, I'd say, to about five. But don't let the timer drop just because. So you can see now I've got five more seconds ready to go, and then bam, 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 and yeah, you get the idea. Um, practice. Practice makes perfect, guys, and yeah, I can't stress that enough. Um, Alright, so now we've got Harpoon, and what I like to do is, so this is our healer over here, and we're on our main target there, going nuts, no, da, 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 da. I'll Harpoon to the target, and when I land, I drop a trap at my feet, and then see the post haste gets us back into the fight. Alright, so that leads me on to the next part, and we'll go into macros. Alright, so macros. Let's open up the macro screen. Okay, first things first, 
once again, I just do my standard pot everything in my macro to just all your cooldowns, okay? Um, so as you can see here, I think what I want to do actually is I might put Snake Hunter after that. I don't know why, but I just feel it should be there. All right, so this is my, so we'll call it burst macro um, that just uses all the cooldowns at once. Uh, right, so what I've made here is a focus harpoon. So the healer would be my focus. And so let's just see if we can set that as our focus. Yep, okay. Um, now say we're on the target here and the healer's within range. I can hold shift and then harpoon to the target for a trap and then still stay on my main target, okay? Um, I don't know, it just feels smoother for me, but we'll link all that down below and you can guys can try it out. Um, your standard sacrifice macros, um, target was party one, party two is the generic, and you can put names in for threes if you so wish. Um, so my freezing trap is the same as it's always been. Uh, you don't actually need to have cast there, you can just remove that and do that there and it'll work the same so as you can see it'll cast it normally and if i don't it'll drop it on my feet um same with okay so trap macro uh sorry with my uh, explosive trap i like to have it at my feet when i'm bursting so that'll drop it at my feet and yeah uh what's the next one the kick that's not for this one uh okay so focus kick once again, you don't need to have cast there. You can do it like that. So that's our focus here, right? We're over here, and let's say the um, the healer's within range. She's about to cast. Uh, we can focus kick and go back. Uh, it's just good because, especially if you're like, you know, say the druid or whatever's come close in for a bash, you can then kick the target without losing sight of your um, your main target. Even if you're going on, say, a shaman or anything like that. It's also good to have there. All right, next one. Uh, actually, I think that's pretty much all I have. Now, ah, okay. So what you can do is see this macro here for Growl. You can also incorporate that with your Ranger's Net, okay? Um, now, obviously it won't work because uh, we don't have a pet available, um, but Ranger's Net is great for locking down not only targets, right? But you can do, um, say, your pet, or anything else that you want to stop from eating you. So here's a good way, here's a quick um, tip. So a Warlock pet, right? Say your Warlock pet is stuck on your healer and you know that they've got their kick up, you can chuck that, you Ranger's Net the Warlock pet, they get out, you know, your healer can get out of combat, get the cast off because it's lined the, uh, the kick. Little things like that, okay? And that's pretty much it for my macros. And we'll quickly touch on add-ons. All right, add-ons list, real quick. Um, this one here, Bartender, so you can see all my um, bits and pieces have lined up down here, don't worry about those. But you can basically alter the entire UI from Blizzard. You can get the battle, I just like it, it's nice and clean and small. Um, Gladiator Lossa is the lady that goes, Polly, Cyclone, Polly. Um, make sure you turn it off in Battlegrounds and uh, World PvP because that stuff will continuously drive you nuts. Um, so Gladius is just the UI, uh, sorry, the action action bars. The target bars that come up here for your arena uh, opponents. Okay, so it'll tell you, you know, when's their next spell, have they trinketed, have they got any mana left. It just makes it more uh, customizable for you to see. You can put whatever you want on there. Um, I just like it because it's just handy to have a big uh, UI right in front of my face so I can have a, more of a closer look at when they're casting and whatnot. Having said that, I do use uh, Quartz, right? So Quartz here, actually it's not even activated. So uh, what Quartz does, it allows me to, so if I put it on myself, see I've got a cast bar here, but if my, I think if I set myself as focus, it might work as well. So there you go. So that here is my focus um, cast bar. Just more of a visual representation of when they're going to, uh, you know, do a clone or anything like that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, healers have to die for battlegrounds. Don't worry about that. Killing blow enhance is still on. I don't know why. It's annoying. It's just that thing that pops up in the middle of the screen when you get a killing blow. Um, that was fun for all about five seconds and just got hell annoying. Okay, this one here. This one here is constantly asked for, and it's this one. 
these Diablo orbs is this one here. Okay, Mr. Is Diablo orbs. Um, it's pretty cool. So if you forward slash uh, MDO, you can then change them to whatever color you want. You can put your own textures in. You can do whatever. Um, you can use player frame, which means you'll have your own player frame. Otherwise, it just gets used down here. And that's pretty much it. And it also tracks your pets as well, which is pretty handy. Just cleans up the UI. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, and class mods. Okay, get class mods. Um, class mods is the one I was going to talk about real quick. Is allows you to set up different things. You can have timer bars for whatever. Your target bar will allow you to track. So if you see here, right? Sorry if this is a little bit uh, long, but I just wanted to show you this because people do ask me for this. So if we just put it down here and we go, uh, where is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. So if we put that on the target, see, it'll give you a pretty cool timer to see how long, if you don't have uh, the default blizzard thing up here, but it doesn't tell you. It's just actually pretty good to have something ticking away. So that way, you know, to refresh the uh, lacerate, if you know, dragon fire grenades about to go off your, you know, uh, explosive trap. But yeah, it's just a cool little um, add on to have because you can go to the alerts. You can type in, give me one sec. I'll, I'll actually set it up for you so you guys can do it. Okay. So once you type in the name of your uh, new alert, come down here, enable it. You can have a sound. So when it's up, you just get it, um, you get alerted. But down here, if we type in mongoose, I think it's mongoose fury. You have to type it in exactly the way it is um, spelt. Now, why did I, did I do that wrong? Mongoose fury. Oh, hold on. It is not a debuff, it's a buff. Okay, uh, we want it on ourselves. So the player is you. Um, and raid warning, that's okay. So now, if we do this, right there, okay? There it is, okay? Then we get the stacks up, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, cool little way to track your um, buffs, debuffs, and anything like that. So you can do whatever you want. You can also have them on a timer bar. But yeah, get it and muck around with it. But other than that, my awesome hunters, um, great to see you guys again. Sorry I've been away, but um, we'll get back into it ASAP. Other than that, guys, if you have any other tips and tricks you want to add to the guide, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more PvE guides, things like that, hit that like button. And um, until next time, you amazing people, keep on sniping, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.